uh, I'm uh, I'm kind of interested because there's something about the dark Brandon thing that is really sinister because it's so obviously I mean I called it on Twitter a shadow of a shadow of something that was once vital six years ago and what I'm talking about is original MAGA memes right and then the shadow of that was the dark MAGA period that happened um when was that like it like last late last year early this year um, now for last year um and that but now there's this kind of plastic version of it where they're giving the left a kind of sanitized corporate version of our meme stuff right the the, the laser eyes and all but what makes it extra specially sinister is that this literally is backed by power right so when when our when our guys are doing the laser eyes and stuff a lot of it is actually just fantasy and wish fulfillment but when those guys are doing it they're doing it when he's literally sent the fbi to raid his political opponent and this is then getting do you, do you understand why it's a bit why it has a very different feel to it when they're doing the laser eye stuff and it's actually backed by every wing of the state and all bits of power um it, it, it's actually a really really dark thing um and i'm and the overwhelming um amount of people who who back this other than blue check marks on twitter like the only non-blue check marks who post this sort of stuff are women as far as i can see um which makes it even more strange you know, yeah, yeah the, the sort of uh, the sort of middle-aged you, you know hideous middle-aged mildewed drawed you know cat ladies i uh, yeah, I mean, I saw, I saw some extraordinary uh, kind of uh, extraordinarily embarrassing takes, um, and uh, and some really horrible ones from from you know all the all of your favorite blue check marks. I, I sent you one. I, I don't know if you want to look at it, but uh, it's it's quite uh, representative of uh, the tenor is that, of such. Is things. that Tim Wise? Is it? Yes, that one. Let me uh, let me just get that up. I mean. I, I, I'll tell you the most overwhelming one I've seen in, in in a moment, but here's Tim Wise. Any maggot who advocates violence in response to Trump facing justice should be arrested now. Free speech does not give you the right to advocate violence. Arrest, arrest them, crush them, make their children functional orphans, end them. Well, some of us have been saying for some time this is what they really think. Um, and I think you're just seeing them being honest at a certain point. This, this, I don't think this is new. This is what they've thought all along. The difference is they feel safe saying it now. Well, this is this is the point that I think Trump is representing. Trump is the one who tears off the mask. He gets them to reveal themselves for who they really are. And and I think part of the what infuriates them is when they attack Trump. There's nothing to attack. I mean, he's not like a. He's not like a principled partisan, like a you know principled conservative, like say, you know they like the pretend Ronald Reagan was, or you know some of the uh, isolationist Republicans who opposed FDR. He's 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 just there to sort of like take the mask off, and the mask is 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 in the process of coming off, and arguably with the FBI raid is in the trash can. Uh, you're not I, wrong. You're going to have a hard a... time getting the mask off a lot of these women. You know that. They're, they're pro mask. <laughs> You're not wrong. But you, but yeah, I mean, I mean Biden supplies. wears a mask. He walks around people. He walks around unmasked people wearing a black mask. I don't know. Maybe because he has COVID all the time. But there's a point about him. Yeah, he drives them crazy to the point they they unmask themselves. But there's also a bit about them feeling safe enough to do it. I, I don't think even during the time he was in office, they would have dared do that. I I think there's a uh, there's a feeling yeah. now that they can do whatever they want, almost. Say if I mean. may, if I may, Byron, I think that's a good point. But I think it might be a proportion, or you know, like a combination between feeling safe enough to do it, and also being in a position where they're clumsy enough to do it, or they have this sort of false sense of security where they feel that they can do it. But what they're actually doing is, you know, stirring up more of a uh, a grain groundswell of genuine opposition against the kind of worldview and so you know socio-political view that they're trying to implement 
and yeah, and of you, course you the mask right. coming off is an inevitable part of that possibly well, i could be wrong but to your point furious i also think that this could be the fact that they so if, if we look at the power structure as it exists in, in the United States, I think you could also look at the fact that as we've seen the groundswell coalesce around Trump, arguably these kinds of dissidents go back to the 90s with like the militia movement. But there was really no national lightning rod to coalesce around. Um, but I think what they're, they're also afraid of losing power because when you get to the point where you back yourself into a corner or painted yourself into a corner, there's, so many, there's only so many things you can do after that point. And we've seen all of these things, whether it's the COVID lockdowns, the Jan 6 investigation, or how they treated Trump and, and all of this. I, I think they sort of painted themselves in a corner and they are believing that it's, it's go time. It's now or never. If we don't do this now, if we don't finish this now, then maybe we'll never finish it. It, uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's part of, it's, yeah. Cool. It's, it's it's sorry, Barnard. Yeah, it, it, and that's the middle ground between they sort of they have this confidence. They feel like they're in a position of of ascendancy or superiority in like this legitimate power structure context. But at the same time, they feel as if the the, the carriage is coming off the rails. They feel that the the tracks are increasingly rickety. And if they don't sort of if they don't throw the spear now, if they don't if they don't strike. You know in a very very short space of time they'll actually lose that position of ascendancy and so there's this sort of these two opposing forces sort of you know pulling against each other between you know the arrogance the clumsiness the the, the sense of haste all these sort of elements are sort of coalescing together which are causing these very particular circumstances in my mind yeah i mean a lot of the you have to remember structurally as well because because of the way they are um, I'm trying to remember the exact formulation that Thomas Sowell uses, but they basically just rely on themselves being in power and they never think, well, what if our enemies just got hold of these same levers, basically? So they've, they've also, they're also in this position now where, I mean, DeSantis is showing what happens when the shoe is on the, when the shoe is on the other foot, right? Um, you know, it's yeah. like, well, you don't have this supine Mitch McConnell like GOP anymore. I mean, yes, there are still rhinos there, but they're being cleared out and they're being replaced with genuine opposition who are ready to use power as an instrument to clear out their political rivals. And it's like, well, when you get to that stage, you have to make sure that your hand is on the lever and you don't let your opponent's hand get on the lever.